Hello and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video we'll be overclocking the Intel Core i9-10850K processor up to 5.4 GHz using custom loop water cooling. We'll also be using the EK Quantum MSI MPG Z590 Carbon EKX motherboard. The Z590 Carbon EKX is the successor to the Z490 Carbon EKX motherboard. The Carbon EKX bundles an improved EK monoblock with flow indicator, a leak tester, and an MSI motherboard featuring revamped looks and an upgraded VRM solution. The Core i9-10850K is the little brother of the flagship Core i9-10900K, which we overclocked twice before already. It is also based on the Comet Lake architecture and was launched around the end of July, two months after the launch of the 10900K. The i9-10850K offers 10 cores and 20 threads, with a listed base frequency of 3.6 GHz and a listed boost frequency up to 5.2 GHz. It is rated at 125 TDP and should retail at an MSRP of 453 US dollars. In this video, we'll cover the basic steps required to get your CPU all the way up to 5.4 GHz. We'll dig into three overclocking scenarios. First, we'll unlock all the power limits using the water cooling mode of the Carbon EKX. Second, we'll do some manual overclocking. Thirdly, we'll try and squeeze a little bit more performance out of the system. But before we get started, let's first have a look at the hardware that we'll be using in this guide. Along with the Intel Core i9-10850K processor and the EK Quantum MSI MPG Z590 Carbon EKX motherboard, in this guide we will be using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z DDR4-4266 memory sticks, a Seasonic Prime 850W Platinum power supply, the Elmore Labs P80 DB2 LPC debug card, and of course EK Quantum water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be around $3,240. With all this in mind, let's jump into the benchmarks and the overclocking. Here is a list of the benchmarks used in this guide. Super Pi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWBot X265, Cinebench R23, V-Ray 5, 3D Mark Night Raid, Final Fantasy 14, Prime 95 Small FFT with AVX. Before we get started with pushing the performance of this i9-10850K processor, let's first have a look at the performance at stock settings. Super Pi 4M, 37.629 seconds. Geekbench 5 Single, 1,377 points. Geekbench 5 Multi, 9,457 points. HWBot X265 4K, 18.146 frames per second. Cinebench R23, 14,257 points. V-Ray 5, 12,044 V samples. 3D Mark Night Raid, 42,207 points. Final Fantasy 14. 90.14 frames per second. When running Prime 95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 3.8 GHz with 0.974 volt. The average CPU temperature is 50.9 degrees centigrade and the average VRM temperature is 40.4 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 127 watt. Water cooling mode is a single BIOS option that allows you to unlock the Turbo Boost 2.0 power limits constraining your CPU's performance. The long story short is that Turbo Boost 2.0 allows the processor to increase the power consumption temporarily above the TDP rating to achieve higher performance. It manages this by accumulating an energy budget during periods of idle time that can be redeployed when necessary during periods of high load. We discussed the Intel Turbo Boost 2.0 technology at length in a previous video titled BIOS explained Core i9-10900K overclocked to 6 GHz with Intel Cryo. While we use a different CPU, the principles demonstrated in that video also apply to our configuration. Hey guys, it's Editing Peter here. I have a couple of charts in Excel that will help you understand how Turbo Boost 2.0 works in the real world. So let's have a look. To demonstrate how Turbo Boost 2.0 works, I set the BIOS to enforce all default Turbo Boost limits. Then I use Prime95 to track the CPU package power. 
When we run Prime95 with AVX, you can see that the turbo is enabled for about 38 seconds. The power consumption reaches 235 watt and then drops sharply to 125 watts. If we run Prime95 without AVX, the turbo is enabled for about 45 seconds. That's because the power consumption is only 210 watts. The power budget at the beginning of each test was the same. However, since our non-AVX workload is less demanding, the power budget is consumed at a rate that's much slower than our AVX workload. So we can turbo for longer. When we run an even less demanding workload with eight threads compared to the default 20 threads, we can see that the turbo boost duration is much longer. The turbo boost is maintained for well over one minute. That's because the power consumption here is only about 160 watts. If we add an additional voltage offset of 0.1 volt on top of our most demanding workload, Prime95 with AVX and all 20 threads enabled, we can see a big impact on the turbo boost. Instead of 38 seconds, we only get 29 seconds of turbo time. That's because more voltage means more power. In our case, the power increases to almost 250 watts. Lastly, just for comparison, here's what the chart looks like with unlocked power limits. The CPU package power reaches over 275 watt sustained. While this will deliver amazing performance, it will also need a very strong cooling solution. By unlocking all the power limits, we effectively tell the CPU to run at the highest turbo boost settings all the time. We also enable XMP. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. It allows memory vendors such as G-Skill to program higher performance settings onto the memory sticks. If the motherboard supports XMP, then you can enable the higher performance with a single BIOS setting. So it saves you from lots of manual configuration. Upon entering the BIOS, press F7 to enter the advanced menu. Enter the overclocking settings menu. Set CPU cooler tuning to water cooler. Set extreme memory profile to enabled. Then press F10 to save the settings and exit the BIOS. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to stock operation. The performance uplift is most notable in multi-threaded benchmark applications, which would typically be heavily constrained by the default power limits. When running Prime95 small F50 with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 4.8 GHz with 1.19 volts. The average CPU temperature is 74.4 degrees centigrade and the average VRM temperature is 60.3 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 255 watt. Anyway, let's do some manual overclocking. The Z590 Carbon EKX motherboard offers a very convenient way to do manual overclocking by using the turbo ratio offset function. This function simply lifts the turbo boost ratios up from the default configuration by a specified amount. Regular viewers of this channel will know that we also use this overclocking technique when we were overclocking the Core i7-10700K with the Z490 Carbon EKX motherboard. Upon entering the BIOS, press F7 to enter the advanced menu. Enter the overclocking settings menu. Set CPU ratio apply mode to turbo ratio offset. Set turbo ratio offset value to plus two. Set CPU cooler tuning to water cooler. Set extreme memory profile to enabled. Set CPU core voltage mode to adaptive mode. Set CPU core voltage to 1.4. Then press F10 to save the settings and exit the BIOS. Before we check the performance uplift, I want to make two notes. First, setting the turbo ratio offset uses the default method of applying turbo ratios, meaning the frequency is determined by how many cores are active. In this new configuration, the frequency will be 5.4 GHz when up to two cores are active, 5.3 GHz when three cores are active, 5.1 GHz when four or five cores are active, and 5 GHz when six, seven, eight, nine, or all 10 cores are active. Also, we are not setting a negative offset when running AVX, meaning the CPU will not further reduce the frequency when AVX instructions are used by the software. Second, we choose adaptive voltage mode for the same reasons why we chose it when we were overclocking the Core i9-10900K with cryocooling. Anyway, we must choose between adaptive mode and override mode. Since we're configuring a very dynamic system with frequencies ranging from 50x to 60x and active cores ranging from one active core to 10 active cores, Obviously, we have to choose for adaptive mode. In adaptive mode, the VF curve used is generated automatically by the CPU 
and covers the CPU ratios from the lowest supported ratio to the default maximum turbo ratio. VF curve stands for voltage frequency curve. The VF curve determines which voltage the CPU should set for a certain frequency. By setting adaptive voltage to 1.4 volt, we lift the voltage for ratios of 52x and up. This is particularly necessary to ensure stability at the highest ratio we have set, 54x for up to two cores. It will also be applied when three cores are running at 52x. However, for the other configurations, from four cores at 51x to 10 cores at 50x, the default VF curve will be followed. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. When running Prime95 small FFT with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 5 GHz with 1.234 volts. The average CPU temperature is 78.1 degrees centigrade and the average VRM temperature is 63.5 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 286 watts. Now let's do some fine tuning. In most of our guides, in the very last overclocking scenario, we always find a way to further increase the CPU frequency. However, while this 10850K can run 5.5 GHz and sometimes even 5.6 GHz, we're not quite able to get it stable at these settings, not even with highly elevated voltages. That means that effectively, the turbo ratio offset plus two has maxed out our CPU. However, that won't stop us from trying to find more performance. We'll try two more things. First, we will increase the ring interconnect frequency. Then we will also try some memory tuning. Upon entering the BIOS, press F7 to enter the advanced menu. Enter the overclocking settings menu. Set CPU ratio apply mode to turbo ratio offset. Set turbo ratio offset value to plus two. Set ring ratio to 48. Set CPU cooler tuning to water cooler. Set extreme memory profile to enabled. Set memory triad to DDR4-4266 CL17. Set CPU core voltage mode to adaptive mode. Set CPU core voltage to 1.4. Then press F10 to save the settings and exit the BIOS. Before we move on to the performance numbers, let's first discuss the ring ratio and memory triad. The CPU ring is the interconnect on the CPU die, which connects all the parts of the CPU. It connects not only the CPU cores, but also the integrated graphics, as well as the system agent. Via this interconnect, the CPU cores can bring in fresh data to use for calculations, as well as send data to the other parts. The ring shares the voltage rail with the CPU core, meaning we don't need to set a separate voltage to increase the ring frequency. We can just increase it until it reaches the maximum stability. Memory triad is a memory overclocking feature that is unique to MSI and it has been on MSI motherboards since the Z97 platform launch in May 2014 alongside the Haswell refresh processors. It aims to provide a step up from XMP when it comes to overclocking the system memory and offers an incredible range of overclocking profiles tuned for all popular memory chips on the market. The way to use it is very simple. Simply select one of the profiles, save the settings and try stability tests. The easiest way to ensure memory overclocking stability is by using the memtest software. Even with the free version, you can open multiple instances of the software and allocate all the available memory to the software. The goal is to achieve 100% coverage of all memory with zero errors. If the software finds an error, it will tell you. Once you have determined the memory is stable, you can move to the next profile in memory triad. Do note that the memory triad function will also adjust voltages if necessary. For example, it may adjust the system memory voltage as well as the CPU system agent voltage. Make sure to verify the settings and ensure that you are comfortable with the raised voltages. In our case, our memory is out of the box overclocked to DDR4-4266 with CAS latency 19. While we were able to improve the memory configuration with memory triad to DDR4-4266, 4533CL18 and run most of the benchmarks, this was not a fully stable system when testing with Mentest. So in the end, we had to settle for DDR4-4266 with CL17. The frequency is the same as our XMP configuration, but we have slightly better memory timings. We reran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default configuration. As expected, the performance continues to rise. 
When running Prime95 small f50 with AVX enabled, the CPU operates stably at 5 GHz with 1.322 volts. The average CPU temperature is 95.8 degrees centigrade and the average VRM temperature is 78.8 degrees centigrade. The average CPU package power is 355 watt. This Prime95 result is by far the most impressive result of all of my testing with this Core i9-10850K and the Z590 Carbon e motherboard. It clearly demonstrates the impact of the improved VRM and cooling compared to its Z490 predecessor. Comparing the maximum stable Prime95 results of our videos with the Z490 Carbon e and the Z590 Carbon e we find the following. What we see is that while the package power increased from 277 watt with the 8 core 10700K at 5 GHz to 355 watt with the 10 core 10850K at 5 GHz, the CPU and VRM temperatures are pretty much the same. That's a very impressive achievement which can probably be credited to the improved VRM design and components as well as the continued joint development efforts of the EK and MSI engineering teams. All right, let's wrap this video up. I quite enjoyed overclocking this Core i9-10850K processor. In terms of the overclocking process and the feel, it's really not that much different from its bigger brother, the 10900K. Actually, in terms of the results, it's also quite similar. 5.4 GHz with up to two cores and 5 GHz in a really heavy workload with all 10 cores enabled, Prime95 with AVX. On the Z590 Carbon EKX, I found in particular the turbo ratio offset a very easy and convenient tool to do manual overclocking. You just set plus one or plus two ratio and that's it, job done. I did find it a bit of a pity that I couldn't figure out how to get at least one core up to 5.5 gigahertz, but I'm really bumping into the limitations of, of adaptive voltage mode here. Increasing the voltage too much would also hurt the overclock on two active cores and three active cores. The most impressive result of my entire overclocking session was definitely that last Prime95 result with 355 watt CPU package power sustained. Yes, the temperatures were very high at 95 degrees centigrade, but they were stable and there were no errors mentioned. So that's damn impressive. When it comes to the aesthetics of the board, uh, I like the EK monoblock looks with the board design, but that's really a very sub subjective opinion and you'll have to figure out for yourself if you like this Carbon EKX. Well, that's it for this video. I hope to return to the Z590 chipset once the Intel Rocket Lake CPUs have arrived. But until then, if you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section below and till the next time.